Hey, all Texan Reacts here, and uh, we're going to be looking at another Ted Ed video. This one is titled, Why Isn't the Netherlands Underwater? Um, it's by Stefan Al, AI. I'm not sure what that is, but anyways, um, another Dutch video. Uh, this is for sure to talk about their um, their dikes and, and everything. So it uh, should be pretty interesting how they reclaimed all that land from the ocean. And it's just a little five minute video, so let's check it out, see what it's all about. In January of 1953, a tidal surge shook the North Sea. The Titanic waves flooded the Dutch coastline, killing almost 2,000 people. Wow. 54 years later, a similar storm threatened the region. But this time, the Netherlands were ready. As the water swelled, state-of-the-art computer sensors activated emergency protocols. Over the next 30 minutes, a pair of 240-meter steel arms swung shut, protecting the channel ahead. Using 680-ton ball joints, the barrier moved in rhythm with the shifting wind and waves. By morning, the storm had passed with minimal flooding. The first field activation of the Meislandkering had been a resounding success. That is so cool. It's, you don't even need a human after it's set in motion. Like they got the sensors that do it. And the sheer mass of those doors is uh, <laughs> it's pretty cool. As one of the planet's largest mobile structures, this storm surge barrier is a marvel of human engineering. But the Meislandkering is just one part of a massive interlocking system of water controls known as the Delta Works, the most sophisticated flood prevention project in the world. The Netherlands has a long history with water management. The country lies along the delta of three major European rivers, and nearly a quarter of its territory is below sea level. This geography makes the region extremely prone to flooding, so much so that some of the earliest Dutch governing bodies were informal water boards that coordinated flood protection projects. But after the storms of 1953, the Dutch government took more official measures. They established the Delta Commission and tasked them with protecting the entire southwestern region. Focusing on densely populated cities, their aim was to reduce the annual odds of flooding below 1 in 10,000, about 100 wow. times as safe as the average coastal city. Accomplishing this lofty goal required various infrastructure projects along the southwestern coast. The first line of defense was to dam the region's flood-prone estuaries. These large inlets fed many of the country's rivers into the North Sea, and during storms, they allowed flood water to surge inland. Using a series of dams, the Delta Commission transformed these estuaries into expansive oh. lakes that serve as... Did that look like... Uh, when it popped up, see right there, all of a sudden there's a little island that those dams are connecting to. That's kind of interesting. Did they just... Uh, was it just the receding water that revealed this island, or did they pile up dirt and rocks and stuff to, to create it? The Delta Commission transformed these estuaries into expansive lakes that serve as nature preserves and community parks. However, this solution wouldn't work for the Nieuwe Waterwe, as the lifeblood, however... She's bleeding! Look at her! <laughs> This solution wouldn't work for the Nieuwe Waterwe. As the lifeblood of the local shipping industry, this passage had to be kept open in safe conditions and barricaded during storm surges. In 1998, the completed Meislandkering provided the flexible protection necessary. Alongside additional barriers like grassy dikes and concrete seawalls, these fortifications made up the bulk of the Delta Works project which was primarily focused on holding back ocean storms. But in the following decades, the Dutch pursued additional plans to complement the Delta Works and protect against floods further inland. Under the Room for the River plan, farms and dikes were relocated away from the shore. This left more okay. space for water to collect in low-lying floodplains, creating reservoirs and habitats for local wildlife. 
This strategic retreat not only decreased flood risk, but allowed for the redeveloped settlements to be built more densely and sustainably. Perhaps no city embodies That's the really Netherlands' cool. multi-pronged approach to Rotterdam. water management as much as Rotterdam, a thriving city almost entirely below sea level. When a storm threatens, densely populated older districts are protected by traditional dikes. Meanwhile, newer districts have been artificially elevated, often sporting green roofs that store rainwater. Numerous structures oh, around cool. the city transform into water storage facilities, including parking garages and plazas, which normally serve as theaters and sports arenas. Meanwhile, in the I think that's genius. That, that is... It's only going to fill up every now and then, like, you know, every few years. So why not the rest of the time? Yeah, be uh, public works, parks and stuff. That's really cool. Harbor, floating pavilions rise with the water floating level. Pavilions? These are the first of several planned amphibious structures, some of which house water purification systems and solar collectors. These strategies are just some of the technologies and policies that have put the Netherlands at the cutting edge of water management. The country continues to find new ways to make cities more resilient to natural disasters. And as the rising sea levels caused by climate change threaten low-lying cities across the world, the Netherlands offers an exceptional example of how to go with the flow. As climate change causes natural disasters to become more, well, disastrous, how can we build smarter, more resilient cities and towns? Explore how we use physics to create flexible buildings that can withstand earthquakes. <laughs> what do earthquakes have to do with climate change? Anyways, uh, yeah, that was really impressive. Um, what the Netherlands has done is it's it's like on such it's on such a huge scale. It's hard to even fathom. See, see what I did there? Fathom. But um, yeah, that was uh, I I was I was impressed with those doors more than anything. Those doors. I I, I love like giant machines and stuff like that. So seeing those ball bearings at what what they say six hundred eighty tons or something crazy, um, really really cool. And I'm guessing. Just dam after dam is what they were showing, like when it went up into the country um, with all those dots along the rivers. I'm guessing just dam after dam, just like uh, floodgates. So it'll fill up and then you can like release some towards the ocean and, and in stages to keep it from getting too out of hand. Uh, that's what we do here in Texas anyways. Um, yeah, really cool. Uh, I I know a lot about not a lot, but I mean, I've experienced a lot of flooding here in Texas. We're actually the flash flood capital of the world um, when it comes to amount of rainfall in like a short amount of amount of time. Um, I think uh, up river from here a few years ago, maybe 2006 ish, uh, they got like 24 inches in four hours, maybe maybe less than four hours. It was, it was quick and it was overnight and it just flooded everything. It was insane. But, um, but we've got dams and, and stuff like that to help, but nothing anywhere close to what the Netherlands has. This is really cool. Anyways, if you enjoyed that, please like this, uh, please go check out Stefan, uh, check out Ted ed. They've got a lot of cool videos over there. So, um, go check them out and let me know if there's something over there you want me to want me to react to. Um, yeah. Comment down below, like this video, subscribe, and check out our Discord. It's uh, linked in the description. Till next time, rock on.